And now, they have given birth to something new here on Kuwait. Let's give a praise clap to our Lord and to them. Amen. Thank you, Kao. Okay, hello, everyone. My name is Mike Yamani, Chief of Operations for Kuwait and Utility Cooperative. Uh, we're here at Koloa Switchyard, uh, home of our first uh, brand new battery energy storage system. Uh, this storage system is a 1.5 megawatt battery. And the whole goal of this system is to be coupled with a three megawatt PV farm that's gonna be located about a mile down the road. Uh, this battery is gonna support that PV during cloud cover, any intermittencies controlling the ramp rate. Uh, but also the dual benefit of this battery is also to uh, support our grid. Um, in fact, the battery is online right now, even though the PVs aren't online. So it's supporting our grid during any kind of disturbance. If we lose a generator or any type of system disturbances, this battery will kick in at a very high speed in milliseconds. That's the great thing about the storage system. Uh, it was commissioned in September, mid-September 15th, uh, 2011. This is one of three similar systems that are going to go in. We have two more that are going to go in in the Port Allen area, similar size, um, same vendor. And by adding those on, hopefully with a loss of generation, we'll be able to avoid a blackout in total. So a great thing for us. This is the, the actual substation that's powering the Kaloa area. Um, and the way it's broken down, you got transmission lines coming over and then there's those big orange, the yellow and the green on our transformers, they step it down to a lower voltage. And then these breakers, individual breakers, actually go to different parts of the Kaloa area. Some go to head to Lawai, some we have a double circuit that loops around to the Hyatt. One goes via the old Kane Road and goes down the road over here. One feeds more Poipu area. So that, that's the way we feed the island. We get a transmission line coming in, transformers and step it down. So how this battery is tied in here, if you can see the um, we have four feeders that spread out through the, through the island, but you see the two feeders right on the side of the bus here. They're brand new. Those are actually coming into the switch gear over here. So this battery and PV is actually powering one side of the bus at any given time. The reason we have a redundancy is in case we do maintenance on one of the transformers, which means we have to take down this whole section, we wanted to be able to make sure the PV and or battery still can um, maintain the grid so what they do in that switch is they can pretty much switch which side they want to power the grid so um, just added reliability you know we don't want our our transformer maintenance down here to take out the use of the PV and the battery sun so the bigger breakers which are a larger version of the small breakers here are actually the transmission breakers so they're there to protect the system and then of course they come in through this bus step down to these power transformers, the green and yellow one, step it down to a lower voltage, a more manageable voltage. And of course it goes to the brake over here. So um, we've got two transmission lines coming in. The one that you see is going out and taking off this way, actually heads back to Lihui switch yard. And then we have the other one that comes, actually drops in and actually followed it along the road drive here. That actually is coming from Port Allen uh, switch yard. So we got transmission line coming from our Port Allen generating station, comes into Koloa, goes out and heads to Lihui and the Lihui station ties to our Kapaya. So we, our transmission system is a big loop and that's the way we maintain our, you know, getting the bulk power over here. And then of course it gets steps down and distributed throughout over here, so. So this battery consists of um, three different components. You got the battery itself with its, all its electronics, but the battery voltage is at about uh, 480 volts, a very low common on voltage for secondary. It goes into the transformer right there, that green one with the little fin sticking out, and that converts the 480 volt to the 12,000 volt so it can match the voltage that goes to the station. And the compartment right next to it is our switch gear. It's a four-way switch gear that takes the two incoming feeds from the station. It takes a feed from the transformer, from the battery, and it also has a spare feed for the PV. So the PV is actually going to be coming into the switch gear with the battery and then that's how they're gonna monitor each other. And then whatever's coming out 
to their bus is the net sum of the battery and the PV kind of working together out there. So that's the way when the cloud comes over, the battery's going to kick in and it's going to, instead of doing this, it's going to kind of do that. And when the sun comes back, instead of doing that, it's just going to do that. So it kind of levels out that intermittency from storage to just kind of, and while it's doing that, it's charging and discharging. But right now we have no PV, but it's online right now. It's supporting our grid. Um, and it's, like I said, it has 30 instances of where it actually supported a grid. So it's, it's working great. We're really excited about that right now. Okay, anybody want to guess how many of these cells are actually in here? Take a guess. Give you M&Ms. <laughs> 2,000. 2,000 cells. They weigh about 80 pounds each. Very heavy, um, very lab laborious to put in. Um, they're about, it, actually you can't see, but they're about three feet long and they're stacked up. So each one of these cells were numbered, individually tested at extreme power, labeled, and so when they brought it back to Kauai, they put it exactly in the same order that it was in, um, commissioned in Texas to make sure that all the cells were working out. Uh, they came in with a charge already. They came in big pallets, and um, it was pretty interesting watching them install this, of course. So this is, this is just a typical, this is just a battery. So it's a typical battery, you know, a low voltage. What really makes a difference from managing the grid is the power conversion that converts DC, which is what batteries are. Everybody knows like the door cells are DC voltage. The power conversion, that's the part you hear humming there. And if it ever goes high, you know, we just had an event because that means it's it is discharging megawatts. Um, but that power conversion of PCS converts the DC to the AC power. So it's almost like a UPS where you have a battery backup in your computer where in case you lose power and that battery just kicks in, but it converts it to your household voltage. Very similar, very similar, except a longer storage and a lot more power output, of course, to the utility. Um, I did forget to mention, this is the state's only utility-owned battery storage. They have similar systems like this on Lanai and Maui and uh, Oahu and the wind farm, but those are developer-owned. So the utility cannot use it for grid support, which is a key part for us is not just mitigating the renewables and increasing penetration, but just, just being able to support our grid. So we have full control over this. It'll respond, it, in fact, our, our grid response overrides the PV mitigation. So when the PV comes online, and let's say it, the PV drops and it smooths it out, if we have an event like a lost generation, right during that time, it'll kick in to support the grid event and not the PV event. Because that's a bigger event for us than just the variations of the PV. Um, it's very smart electronics in there. It can do a lot of other things. I mentioned that this was a 1.5 megawatt um, battery for one megawatt hour, but it also can do an overload rating of 2.25 megawatts for 10 seconds. It'll hold it for 10 seconds, and then it'll automatically drop to 1.5. And so if you do the math and you get three of these at 2.25 and you got 6.75 megawatts, one of our diesel generators is about seven megawatts. So if we lose that generator and we basically load shed the island, we lose parts of the island, and that's just the way it is being on island grid, three batteries on, it'll save the system, no outages. So great grid support um, above and beyond just the PV increasing penetration. So that was one of the key reasons we felt that we needed to own, own the system. So this, this is the control row. Basically, it's, it's the brains of this whole station. All the communications, the, the sensors, the inputs, um, not high voltage stuff, just low um, digital or um, analog information, all gets transferred from the outside bus and from the battery, it all gets um, wired in through here. So um, yeah, so we got, you know, we talk about protection, the system in a lot of computerized electronics. Uh, we got a radio system housed in here. We got a high speed recorder housed in here. If you go out and look at the, we have a graph showing the event. That's actually from a high-speed recorder. We wanted to make sure that we know that this, this battery was doing what it's supposed to do during the sun, during an event. So, and like I said, we've been capturing events. Uh, we're talking about cycles in milliseconds. It's capturing data. So very, very high-speed, good resolution. And that's what helped us learn about our system is just these devices. We have one here. We have one at the Port Allen Power Plant, one in Kapaya. These high-speed devices kind of get, gave us a good sense on what we needed and how this battery would help. So. Uh, this this control room, and if you come in later on, you can see there's batteries in here actually, because obviously when you lose station, when we lose power to this whole station, 
we need to know that power is out of this whole station. So the communication devices are all backed up with battery also in here that keeps the 48 DC power up and running. So that all the equipment, electronics, computers can still continue to run. So.